guys welcome to this video lecture series on the subject of process equipment design um harsh panchal assistant professor in chemical engineering department of lj institute of engineering and technology in previous video we have understand how do we can calculate pressure drop from given system right so in order to understand that we have develop this particular equation for calculating pressure drop through the piping system right this one and we have also seen what do we mean by this schedule number then outer diameter of pipe and inner diameter of pipe right then we have calculated how do we can uh, how do we can estimate the optimum diameter for given piping system by using this particular equation right and we have also solved this sum if you have missed that video you can find it in the i button over here now having said that let us just move to the today's topic in today's topic we are going to cover pressure drop through fittings and valves well it is not that much difficult to understand that any piping system always consists different types of fittings and even it also has different types of valves in order to facilitate space for uh, flow measuring devices and to handle that liquid right as you can see here in this image we are using t type fitting even sometimes we are also using 90 degree elbows right and we are using different types of valves in order to facilitate or we can say in order to control the flow from this piping system right so this but this type of the uh, devices or we can say fitting or the valves equipment always introduce some external pressure drop right so we need to calculate this additional pressure drop in the piping system so in order to do so we have developed some different types of equation and ultimately we are adding this pressure drop created by such devices such as different type of fittings and valve to the main pressure drop of our piping system so as you can see here piping system generally contains different types of fittings and valve like this right this type of fittings you will always find in any piping system to change the direction of flow or to facilitate space for the fluid uh, for the flow measurement devices right so this fitting and valve offers additional pressure drop and friction loss so because of this type of the devices or we can say fitting or valves they also introduce some additional pressure drop to our existing piping system so now we have to calculate that this uh, pressure drop being introduced by the such type of fittings so now our job is to calculate the pressure drop is being created by this fittings and valves so here you can see that this pressure drop can be expressed either as the equivalent straight pipe length right that is being represented by n that we will understand in a moment and it can also be expressed as the velocity head that is being represented by capital k so let's just understand how do we can uh, how do we can express our pressure drop in this fitting and valve with the help of equivalent straight pipe length so let us understand what do we mean by this equivalent diameter equivalent length so as you can see here equivalent length of a valve or a fitting right so equivalent length of a valve and fitting is the length of straight pipe so the equivalent length of fitting and our valve is length of straight pipe of same size creating the same friction factor or we can say same friction loss that of our fitting and valve right so in this particular definition of uh, equivalent length what we are what we are trying to say is we are considering a piping system which will be give the same friction factor or we can say same friction loss as of our fitting or valve right right so let us understand this thing with one example so as you can see here let us suppose this is my piping system right and inside this piping system i have introduced one valve like this right so this is my valve right 
so this valve offers an additional pressure of let's just say this valve offers additional pressure delta t equal to 10 kilopascal right so what do we mean by equivalent length is we are considering same size of pipe right straight pipe like this this is our straight pipe right and this straight pipe will also give the delta p that is our pressure drop equal to pressure drop given by our fitting or valve in this particular case this valve right this valve so this pipe should give pressure drop of 10 kilopascal right then the length of this particular pipe will be called as equivalent length to the this valve right because pressure drop is being given because pressure drop introduced by this valve is equivalent to pressure drop given by this particular pipe of length le le right so this is what do we mean by the equivalent length i hope the concept of equivalent length is clear to you by now right so this concept is again very important and this definition of equivalent length it is being asked in a gtu exam for so many times right even in some mcq type exam this equivalent length is also being asked now often this equivalent length is also being expressed in terms of inside diameter or we can say internal diameter of our pipe as equivalent length divided by inside diameter of our pipe right so this is the one one type of expression that we can explain for the pressure drop with the fittings and valve in terms of equivalent length right there is one more type by which we can express our pressure drop of fittings and valve and that is velocity head so now let us understand that what do we mean by the velocity head that is capital k so the number of velocity head lost in the pipe for valve and this fitting is being defined as this particular formula as you can see here the pressure drop with valves and fitting can be given by k that is your velocity head density velocity square divided by 2 gc right so in this we can let's just understand let's just understand each and every term in this particular formula here delta p means the additional pressure drop which is being introduced by our fittings and valve while this k is known as the velocity head generally this velocity head is being given to you in the particular example right this velocity head is different for different types of fittings and valve as you can see here in this image if we are using gate valve and it is being open it is being in an open condition then it will give velocity head k equal to 0.17 and the value for plug valve is 0.4 so these are the different values used to calculate the velocity head k right if we are having 90 degree elbow then the value is 0.75 k for the 45 degree elbow value of velocity head k is 0.2 so these are the different value that we need to remember for solving the sum but for a general case this value are given itself in the question right then we have velocity and density which is being divided by gc that is your newton law conversion factor and value of gc is generally one when we are considering si unit so based on this particular formula we can calculate pressure drop introduced by our fittings and valves so now let us understand this particular thing with help of example right so that it will clear more idea so so that it will clear entire picture of the piping system right and this will conclude the section of piping system or we can say process design of piping system in which we have to understand designing of two things the very first one is to design our piping system and we have to calculate the optimum diameter and pressure drop induced by our pipes and in addition to that we are considering different types of fittings and valves that are being associated with our piping system and pressure drop introduced by such devices now let us solve this particular sum which is being asked in a gtu exam for so many times 
So this will clear entire picture about the process design of piping system, right? So what they are being asking here is, you can see here, carbon dioxide is being conveyed from top of this stripper of ammonia plant to the urea plant. So we have to transfer our carbon dioxide from one place to another place, right? And they have been asked to calculate the pipe size required based on following data. So we have to calculate pipe size required for this particular case, right? And the given data are here. Flow rate of CO2 is equal to 1000 tons per day, right? You need to remember these units, right? You have to always convert these units in a desired form. Then the total length of pipe is being given as 800 meter, right? So the length of our pipe will be 800 meter. Then available pressure at the inlet of pipe which is being equal to 24 kilopascal gauge, right? This G represents the gauge pressure. Now, now the next data is discharge pressure of CO2 from pipe required that is equal to atmospheric pressure. So the discharge pressure of our CO2 gas will be atmospheric, right? Then number of 90 degree elbows in a pipeline system is equal to 8. So we are going to use 8 90 degrees elbow. Then number of butterfly valve are 1. So we are going to use only one butterfly valve in this entire piping system. And we are also having one flow nozzle. Then temperature of gas is equal to 60 degrees Celsius and viscosity is being given by 0.016 centipoise, right? So these are the all data which has been given in order to estimate or we can say in order to uh, design our entire piping system, right? This particular example can be asked in a GTU exam for 7 marks. They can change some values, either they can change this mass flow rate or the length of the pipe, right? But you need to remember the procedure to calculate such type of the example, right? That means to design our piping system. There are some steps that we need to follow in order to calculate or we can say in order to design our piping system. So let's just understand what are these steps. So the very first step in order to calculate or we can say in order to design our piping system is to estimate the density, right? So in this particular example, we have been asked to calculate density of CO2. So let's just write here rho of CO2 which is being equal to Pm by RT. Now this formula we have developed in a previous video, right? So if you have missed that video, I will still recommend that first you see that video in which I have explained how do we can find this formula to calculate density which is equal to Pm by RT. Now here pressure that is P is one atmosphere, right? So I can write 1 here, M which means molecular weight of carbon dioxide that is 44, right? This thing you need to remember, right? Such data will not be given in example itself. This data you need to remember for always. Then we are using this universal gas constant R. So value of R is equal to 0.082, right? We are using pressure in terms of atmosphere, so we have to take also gas constant in terms of atmosphere, right? And the temperature for gas is being given like, is being given like 60 degree Celsius. So I have to take that 60 degree Celsius for that, I will convert it into Kelvin so that 273 plus 60, right? So if I do this maths here, then I will be calculating my density of CO2 as I have to do 1 multiplied by 44 which is being divided by 0.082 which is also being multiplied by 273 plus 60 that is 333 Kelvin, right? And my answer will be something around 1.6113 kg per meter cube, right? So this is the density of carbon dioxide at given condition of pressure and temperature, right? Now the second thing that we need to calculate is the mass flow rate of given system, right? So the mass flow rate for given system was 
here you can see that the flow rate of CO2 equal to 1000 tons per day, right? So here you can see that the mass flow rate M which is being equal to 1000 tons per day, right? So I need to convert this tons per day into kg per hour, right? So in order to do so, I will multiply this 100 multiplied by 10 raised to 3. Since 1 ton here you can see 1 ton is equal to 1000 kg, right? So by this formula I can write this 1 ton is equal to 1000 kg which is being divided by we here we have days. So 1 day is equal to 24 hours, right? And in 1 hour, we have 3600 second which is being multiplied by 24. So, it will ultimately give me this second, right? So, for that, I am writing as 24 hours which is being multiplied by 3600 and we will have unit of kg per second, right? This is the desired unit of our mass flow rate. That we require mass flow rate always in kg per second, right? So, to do this exercise, I have convert this 1000 tons per day into 1000 kg per day and my answer will be something around 11.57 kg per second like this, right? So, here in order to solve such type of sums, we have to first calculate density in kg per meter cube and mass flow rate in kg per second, right? Now, after doing this, we need to calculate or we can say we have to assume velocity for this particular sum. So, let's just assume velocity of gas since this velocity is not given in the example itself, right? So, I have told you in a previous lecture for the recommended velocity, we need to always assume some initial velocity, right? Based on that velocity, we will be calculating our entire piping system. So let's just understand or let's just, so let's just assume our initial velocity V, right, which is equal to 20 meter per second, right. So our CO2 is passing at the rate of 20 meter per second from given piping system. Now we have to find inside diameter of pipe based on this velocity. So in order to do so, we will be using the continuity equation that says that mass flow rate is equal to density into velocity and area, right? This equation we have understand in the fluid flow operation, right? It is being called as the continuity equation. So, here we have mass flow rate as 11.574 kg per second, which is being equal to our density that is 1.5. 611 kg per meter cube, which is being again multiplied by our velocity that we have assumed to be 20 degrees 20 meter per second and our area is nothing but area of pi that is pi by 4 di square right here di means our internal diameter so now if i have to solve this thing then i can write here my pi by 4 d square d i square is equal to 11.574 which is being divided by 1.611 into 20, right? So, if I have to calculate my d i square then it will be 11.574 which is being divided by this thing and then it will be multiplied by this 4 and it will be divided by this pi and I will get my answer of di square which is equal to 0.3596 meter square, right? But since it is the di square, I have to find my inside diameter. So, I will take the square root of this answer and then I will get my answer as 0.677 meter, right? So, this is what my internal diameter. Right? So, to convert this internal diameter into the mm, it will be di is equal to 677 mm, right? So, this is my initial internal diameter based on this assumed velocity, right? 
so for the first trial we have to assume our velocity and based on that we have to calculate the internal diameter of our piping system now the fifth step is to calculate the reynolds number basically reynolds number is equal to dv rho by mu so here our diameter is 0.677 which is being multiplied by 20 and our density is 1.6113 and which is being divided by viscosity of co2 gas which is being, which is given in the question itself right it is equal to 0.016 since it is in the centipoise so i have to multiply it by minus 3 right so if i do this math and i will get my answer for the reynolds number which is equal to 1363562.62 in order to say that this is greater than the value for the turbulent flow right so we can say that this particular flow is in the turbulent region now our second and the foremost the important task is to create or is to calculate the pressure drop in this particular straight pipe right so in order to calculate this uh, pressure drop we are using this formula of delta p by l that we have understand in a previous lecture right we are using this formula since the data for the friction factor f is not given right so for that case we are using this formula otherwise we will use another formula in which the friction factor is given but in this question the value of friction factor is not given so I am using this particular formula. So now I have, so now we only need to substitute all the values in this particular formula. Here delta P is need to be calculated divided by length of pipe that is equal to 800 meters. Then 4.07 into 10 raise to 10. Now our mass flow rate is 11.574 raise to 1.84. Then it will be multiplied by the viscosity that is 0.016 into 10 raised to minus 3 bracket raised to 0.16 right. Then I have to again multiply it with inside diameter that need to be in millimeter. So I will write 677 raised to minus 4.84 and ultimately I will have my density as 1.84. 6113 raised to minus 1 right so now if i do maths here then i will get my delta p which is being equal to 243.68 into 10 raised to minus 3 kilo pascal right and if i convert this thing into pascal then i will get 6243.68 pascals so this is my delta p with the help for the piping system right now our next job is to calculate the pressure drop in the butterfly valve so in order to calculate this we will use this particular formula of velocity head that is being equal to k so in order to calculate the pressure drop in the butterfly valve we will use this formula of pressure drop which is equal to delta p equal to velocity head k for our butterfly valve into density which is being multiplied by velocity and then divided by 2 gc now value of k for the butterfly valve it is being equal to 0 0.24 which is given in the question itself right so if i replace here this 0 0.24 and do this math one more time then i will get 0 0.24 multiplied by 1.6113 into 20 square which is being divided by 2 into 1 then my answer for this one is being equal to as 77.25 pascals right so this thing we will call it as delta p e1 that is your pressure drop in butterfly valve after calculating pressure drop in butterfly valve we will be calculating pressure drop in 90 degrees elbow that will be equal to delta p e2 k rho v square divided by 2 gc 
Now K for 90 degree algo is equal to 0.75. If I substitute here 0.75 into 1.6113 multiplied by 20 square divided by 2 into 1. Then I will be getting my answer for the pressure drop in the 90 degrees elbow equal to 241.41 pascals, right? So now I have all the information regarding my pressure drop. A for the case of straight pipe, we have calculated pressure drop equal to 6243.68. Now the additional pressure drop of butterfly valve which is equal to 77.2 pound. And the pressure drop for our 90 degrees elbow is equal to 241 into 41 pascal, right? And pressure drop created by the nozzle is negligibly small. So, we are not calculating pressure drop created by small nozzle, right? Now, the next and the last step is to calculate total pressure drop. So, for that, I will write like this, delta P total T is equal to delta P in the tube that we have calculated plus delta P in PE1 that is our butterfly valve plus delta P E2 that is our 90 degrees elbow plus delta P E3 that is our nozzle system. But we are neglecting this pressure drop in the nozzle pressure system since pressure drop in a nozzle is very less. So now my answer for the delta P that is our piping system is equal to 6243.68 right then pressure drop in the uh, butterfly valve is equal to 7.25 right and pressure drop in the 90 degrees elbow is equal to 241 into 41.41 right but we are using 8 numbers of this 90 degrees elbow. So, this pressure drop is need to be multiplied by 8 since we have calculated for the one elbow, right? But we are using 8 number of elbows, hence this pressure drop is need to be multiplied by 8. And if I do this math, I will get my answer of total pressure Pt is equal to near about 8252 pascals which is equal to 8.252 kilopascals, right? So, this is our final answer, right? But the last step and the foremost important step is to compare the total pressure with available pressure drop, right? So, we have calculated total pressure as 8252 kilopascal, right? 8 point, here point will be there, 8.252 kilopascal. And now we have to compare our total pressure with available pressure. So the available pressure here let me write delta P that we have calculated delta Pt is 8.252 kilopascal. And my total available pressure is delta P available is around 24 kilopascal right. Which means I have calculated pressure which is in the range of this available pressure right. But my range is up to 24 kilopascal. So I can uh, increase my pressure drop. So in order to increase the pressure drop, what we are going to do is, we will decrease our size of pipe. That is diameter of pipe. Right? So the third step in which we have assumed our, our diameter of pipe, right? As 677 mm, instead of that, we will consider lesser diameter for the next trial at trial, right? So, let's just assume our diameter to be 6600 mm. Now, we will do this exercise one more time that we will calculate the pressure drop in piping system, pressure drop in butterfly valve, pressure drop in 90 degrees elbow with the diameter of pipe equal to 600 mm, right? And ultimately, we will again compare this pressure drop with the available pressure, right? So, if we do this math, then we will have something like this. Let me just take another type of the pen here. So, this data that is for the diameter of 677 mm, we have calculated pressure drop to be 8.25, right? This thing, 8.25 kilopascal. 
and now if I take diameter of 600 mm, right, then I will be getting pressure drop of 15.58 kilopascal, right. Now instead of that, I, if I have taken the diameter of my pipe as 500 mm, then my answer for total pressure will be 37 with 37 kilopascal, which is fairly larger than the available pressure drop, right. So we cannot exceed the available pressure drop of 24 kilopascal. Our answer should be in the range of 24 kilopascal, right. So this is how you can design your entire piping system. Now let's just quickly revise what we have done in this example. So our first step is always to calculate density in this particular unit of kg per meter cube, right. Then our second step is to calculate mass flow rate in the unit of kg per second. Then the third step is to assume the velocity for the initial trial calculation, right. For the first calculation we have assumed velocity of 20 meter per second and based on that velocity we have calculated our inside diameter from this continuity equation which is coming out of 272 which is equal to 6.77 mm, right. So now based on this diameter I have calculated my Reynolds number which is fairly large to be in the turbulent flow. Then the sixth step is to calculate pressure drop with the help of this particular formula. And this pressure drop is being coming out of like this in the Pascal, right. Now the, in the seventh step I have calculated pressure drop from butterfly valve with the help of this equation, right. In the eighth step I have calculated pressure drop from the 90 degrees elbow with the same formula here, right. I have to consider this K value for different, for the different valves and fittings. Now in the ninth step I have calculated the total pressure drop which was coming around 8.25 kilopascal. Then I have compared all this pressure drop with the available pressure drop of 24 kilopascal in the 10th step, where I have seen that my pressure drop is very less than the available pressure drop. So for that, to increase the pressure drop, what I have done is, I have reduced my diameter of pipe, which will ultimately increase my pressure drop, right? And I have done again this calculation. So for that I have taken 600 mm as the diameter and if I do all the exercise then I will get pressure drop around 15.558 kilopascal. So this concludes this sum and designing of our piping system. We will see you in the next video. Till then keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.